Okay, we are going to foil up the Scrappy Bear. I started already, and then I'm like, well, I should probably videotape a little bit of the foiling. These teeny tiny pieces are just loads of fun. I, um, I like to do like a coloring book page or something that I find or just draw up to use up my scraps. It's a good way to do it if you don't do mosaic, which eventually I'm going to try mosaic because it look, looks fun. And I'd like to make some um, stepping stones for my yard. But I tend to, especially on these little ones, I crimp as I go the best that I can so I have some place to hold it. Otherwise, I would have this foil all over my fingers in a mess. This little bear is pretty popular. I live in the mountains and we have black bear kind of everywhere. For the most part, we all get along, but sometimes they get into the garbage or they get into somebody's car that left, you know, some fast food bags or something in there. Smells good to them. I know uh, one of my neighbors has got a really big cherry tree. And the bears love the cherries, I can tell you that. I've seen them in the tree one time. But most of the time, you just find evidence of them. In your yard with uh, a little bit of bear scat full of cherry pits but <laughs> that's fun living in the mountains now this one I'm gonna try and push these down there we go push it down make it smooth and for some reason this uh, one roll of black has got like where the cutter double cut the edge so I get these little furry pieces on there sometimes I really don't want to leave them on there I'm foiling on the board that I put everything on and it's a little bit challenging because it's uh, <laughs> it's a ceiling tile and it tends to grab my piece. So let's get this little booger out too. But the ceiling tile is inexpensive. And if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or what have you, sometimes if they have broken ones, they'll just give them to you because they can't do anything with them but throw them away. I have, um, when I'm doing a layout and uh, using, whoops, came, I use a, a board that I can nail my horseshoe nails into. But this works fine for foil. And I'm not going to bore you with foiling the whole thing on camera because that would be too long. And I'm sure you all have seen foiling before. And if you haven't, there's a ton of great videos out there. I've got one that's kind of instructional, but it's not step-by-step step, um, because there are so many that I have found over the years that are out there showing you how to uh, foil. And honestly, the best way to learn is to do it. And I know when I first started doing it, I had to do trimming and taking it off. I'm sorry, I went off camera, didn't I? Taking it off and uh, even this one looks like it might have a little bit of a spot that I'll have to trim. I always go around my outside first. Some people don't because they figure the outsides on there pretty good from the wrapping process. 
but sometimes I will find a um, air bubble or something. And I don't want an air bubble in there. Yeah, see right there, I'll probably trim with my Zacto knife. Where it went overlapped a little bit in my finish. It's not super duper obvious when you're done if it's that small, but sometimes I overlap a lot more. If you look, it's right there. And honestly, I don't know if you would see that in the solder or not, but I tend to trim it up if I can. I mean, it's just a smidge, but Okay, I will set you free so you're not bored, silly. Because I've got the whole bear to go. <laughs> I've got all that. We'll catch up to you on the solder. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and solder this little bear up today. And since I did this kind of without a pattern, I just had the outline of the bear. Um, and I took my scrap pieces of glass and cut them to fit and just kind of made my own abstract shapes out of it. I have a few gaps that I wouldn't normally have if I was using a full pattern. And so what I did is see here, right there, I put in some of the um, braided, uh, let me show you. It's like a braided um, copper, and this one is actually already tinned. I actually have some that is not tinned that I use when I solder jewelry if I need to, if I need to soak up some of the solder. Um, because the copper one, you can just like swipe it through your uh, jewelry solder, and it'll pick up the extra that you don't need. Um, so anyhow, I put that in there kind of works like restrip. Uh, gives it more stability, fills in the big gaps so that there's more for the solder to stick to. So I will get myself situated with my gloves and we can start soldering this guy. Oh, the studio is a little bit chilly today. I am trying to get the heat to kick in. And check my tip here. So we're going to tack it and then get it off of the ceiling tile. And I'm using up the last of my really liquidy flux. Um, a bunch of people have convinced me that I want to use gel flux. So I have some gel but I don't want to open it until I've used this up. It's amazing how long flux lasts. It's because you really don't need that much. Um, so let's get our little guy tacked down so we can get him on the soldering mat. And tacking doesn't have to be pretty because you know you're going to go over it and make your your lines. I have a reflection from the overhead light there. I couldn't see very well. And the smell of the burning push pins reminds me that I need to open my window. It's kind of counterintuitive to turning on the heat, isn't it? But safety first. Must breathe clean air. I've got a little fume extractor too, which um, I turn on some because this is such a big building that really I could probably get away with that instead of opening the window. But on video... 
you'd probably hear it, and that would be annoying for the background noise. I must not have fluxed there. See how that was acting? It was acting all goopy because it has no flux. Now we're better. I think this is like my most relaxing and fun part of stained glass. And here I have like a larger gap, but it wasn't big enough for me to think I needed to put any braiding in. But back to the relaxing, once you get going on this, you get like a, a little zen time going, watching the solder flow and... Probably don't need it right there, but I'm going to do it. these little tiny ones down here in the bottom I might have to take this pattern and turn it into a stained glass pattern I think the bear was just off of one of those free coloring book pages and I just like the shape of him And of course, it's adapted a little bit to me because of the, um, the fact that I'm not using the entire pattern that was made. I just used parts of it. Now, where this braiding stuff is, it kind of seeps down in. So, I tend to put it on there a little bit heavier when I'm tacking. I know a lot of people think that any pattern on the internet is free, and they're not all free. Um, you do have to read the site that you're finding your picture from and see what you're allowed to do with that image. Um, this one had nothing restricting it. Um, it was just a, here he is, download him and have fun. Let's see if I tacked enough to move him. And I think I did. So, we will find my cup for these pins. And here it is. Get them off my high price ceiling tile. And I wrapped the ceiling tile with painter's tape just because I was getting the little fuzzies from me cutting it up all over me. If you've ever, ever broken a seal, ceiling tile, you'll know what I'm talking about. So. Oop, that part's pretty loose still. So we slide him ever so gently onto our soldering board. get rid of the extra stuff I'm running out of space <laughs> I do not have the neatest art studio I definitely have the Albert Einstein brain clutter 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 what's funny though is I kind of know where everything is now I'm just going to resolder or a reflux, I'm sorry, so that I can get my solder going. And you'll see after we do the front and we get to the back that there's going to be some big pieces in there that 
are gappy, and I probably shouldn't solder or flux this whole thing, but um, I never know <laughs> when I start my Zen flow which way I'm going to go. Sometimes I'll go all the way from the top to the bottom. So I go ahead and flux it all. can always apply more flux if it dries out when you get to it. Um, and his nose, I didn't cut out his nose because that was going to be tiny. So I, uh, I'm going to paint it in later. I think I mentioned this to you guys last time. I saw a video where somebody was holding their iron up like this. And boy, I have found that I actually do have more control. And I get a really nice bead from it. And of course, you can always go back and clean up what you need to. And now that we're at this really thick spot, having to go up and back, up and back. I like to, as much as I can, go all the way from the top to the bottom on my first bead. To me, it helps to solidify the pattern. Um, and I'm not worried about the extra pulling off there because we will use it when we uh, when we do our edges, um, and this will be patinaed in black, so we all know that black hides a multitude of sins. It doesn't hide them all, so you can't be you know too lazy about it. But it does hide. A lot. And I've got some gaps to hide for sure. I'm going to pull some of this extra in here because the eyeball, it fit, but it was a little bit off. That was a challenge to um, foil. And I know everybody kind of develops their own method of soldering. Um, I had somebody tell me that mine is mine is uh, very sporadic, which I do tend to go back and forth a lot. Some people I've seen, boy, they do some perfect lines and just go, they know their patterns really well. And they can go from one end to the other without any issues. This one being an abstract... I've only done one other one. I didn't realize that stuck out so much, but that's okay. He'll be fine. And where I know I have a big gap, I kind of slow down so it'll fill in. You'll definitely see it on the other side. I do enjoy abstract and creating my own take on a pattern. 
or picture. Tell you what, though, there's some really uh, talented pattern designers out there. And I've been practicing with my um, Adobe Illustrator and trying to develop some of my own designs that are reproducible. I just love glass so much that sometimes I just come out and start playing with it and inspiration strikes and I start making something that uh, ends up turning into a piece. I did a window that way and then I got a commission for the window. They didn't want it exactly, but they wanted it close, so I had to actually go and sketch my pieces so I could redo those at least. And I'm doing a little bit of the tinning along the way just to do it while we got it. Let me open this up a little bit. See how my flux is doing over here. I don't think I've ever soldered where the studio was this chilly. I left the um, the heat on really low last night, so it wouldn't be terrible in here. And I actually had my little kiln running, so the little kiln was putting off some heat too. But Winter has come, or is coming. I heard at church this morning where they said, Oh, it might snow tonight. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. I did not see that in the forecast. I'm sure if it does, it would just be flurries. Let's see, just a tiny bit of copper stick in there. So far, the flux has still been acting okay, so I'm not going to put any fresh down. It's the only thing about holding the iron this way is when you're doing tinning, it's not quite the right angle to just smoothly go across, but that's okay. And it makes my life this much easier on a bead. I'll keep holding it this way. I don't think, I've watched a lot of, um, people on YouTube doing their stained glass and I don't think I've seen anybody hold their iron the same way. So it's definitely personal preference. And I'm not sure about you guys, but sometimes when the light hits my line It reflects back and I don't see it so well. I do like these high bay lights though in here. It's nice, very bright. I 
And we'll see how this goes. We might speed it up for you. I have, um, I did some stained glass or some fused glass videos on making your own unique glass, some part sheets. And, uh, if you've got a kiln, it's really kind of fun to do. And I've done, I've used that glass in my stained glass work just to have something different or something that fits what I'm working on. And, um, worth doing if you can you know if you have a kiln and you can do it I know I, I also have it on my website for sale um, I normally do it to order though because it's kind of expensive to have it sitting in stock uh, I'm not going to make a whole bunch of pieces that I personally am not using right now and it only takes me a day to make them so it's not like it's that delayed or anything some of these spots that I'm hitting they just look kind of flat and I know when I do the back side they're gonna probably goof up again but All right, let's take a look at the back. Now you see how the thick spots came through. And here you can see the, um, hold them up a little bit. You can see the braiding. It didn't actually go all the, all the way through yet. There's another little piece of braiding. But it does fill up and it does uh, make that gappy spot more secure. I tend to tap off my brush. I cut it down so it doesn't have all the long hair. Keeps me from getting too much solder, which even still, these little brushes hold a lot of, I keep saying solder and I mean flux. These little brushes hold a lot of flux. I don't know if you've ever watched um, RDRV, but they have, and it's smart. Um, I should look for a bigger cup because they have a cup that they can just bang their brush off on, on the sides, and I'm sure they get more out of their bristle than I do tapping it off. Those two are fun to watch. I, um... I actually used to live um, in Wilmington on the coast, and when I would go to see my sister in Somerville, I would go through and I'd see Conway, and that's where their glass studio is, and now I'm like, well, maybe I need to go down there and take a class or something. It'd be kind of fun. can never quit learning. I mean, even though I've developed a style and a pattern of doing things, I still like to watch other people or take a class from somebody else just to see how they do something because we all evolve in the process. We all pick up ideas that can make our lives easier can make our work look better. Um, I've been doing some some type of art for oh gosh, probably thirty some odd years now. I used to do a lot of painting, and back before they had Etsy and Amazon handmade, and you know you got your own website. 
I used to sell on eBay. So I actually have paintings all over the world, which is kind of cool. Um, I remember I was working with one commission. He had lost the bid on this one painting. And he really wanted it. But somebody had sniped it right at the end. That was the bad thing about eBay is that was before they had buy it now even. It was all um, auction period. I think if you bought, if you got a store, you could have like set prices on your stuff. But um, I kept mine in the auctions. And he lost it and he wanted that painting so I told him I said well I can't do it exactly but I can I can do it close and so that was from Singapore of all places I thought that was pretty cool I always did enjoy painting. Um, I actually do some glass painting too. And once I get a little bit more organized in the studio, I will probably do some painting videos. Granted, glass painting versus canvas painting is a little different. Some of the concepts still the same, like mixing colors and stuff, but the... Uh, the application of it sometimes is a little bit different and having to fire in between sometimes so that you don't mess up your under layer. I don't know if you guys enjoy me telling stories while I'm doing this or not, so you let me know in the comments if you like me rattling on, and if you don't, then I'll find a way to not rattle, ramble, however you want to call it, run my mouth. <laughs> I will probably speed this up anyway. without me talking the crows talking don't know if you can hear them or not I had to chuckle last night because I have a a camera outside my studio um, and about midnight three raccoons came running through not sure where they were heading I know I didn't have anything for them to get into, so pretty sure they didn't stay around. bit on my glass just to make sure I don't get too hot in one spot and then I'll sneak back and hit this again Let me get some more off of here So 
actually a class that I'm going to try and take either this winter if it's not too bad a weather because it is down the mountain from me um, or definitely in the spring and it's the uh, it's doing your stained glass with all lead came and I've done some but I would like to do bigger pieces and I want to have the confidence that I'm designing smart for strength and I have the proper uh, reinforcement going on so that if I ever did like a bigger panel it wouldn't fall apart because that would be depressing especially if you sold it to somebody and had to fix it so there's some things you can learn on your own and learn through books and reading and YouTube um, but I think if you have the opportunity to take a class in person where you can ask questions and have certain things happen that you know might happen to you at home and you don't know what to do about it and what's good about the, these classes is I think he only takes two people at a time so you definitely get attention But I think it's going to depend on the weather if I sign up before the spring. We go by woolly worm prediction up here there's actually a festival next weekend the woolly worm festival so we'll find out what the woolies have to say about our winter the ones i've seen so far have a really wide brown band which means a milder winter And I know the weather people are saying we're going to get a lot of snow this year. And honestly, last year, the woolly worms were almost uh, all black. Matter of fact, it was the first time I'd ever seen an all black one. Which would have implied heavy snowfall. That didn't happen. So I think the worms are messing with us. One of the other things they do up here is they, um, in the month of August, you put a bean, a big bean in the jar if it's really foggy in the morning, or a smaller bean or a medium sized bean depending upon the fog and that's supposed to predict the inches of snowfall this year I never did see the outcome the newspaper usually runs that I'll have to look for it okay so we've got our back done now I'm going to flip back over to the front and see what I might have messed up. There's a little bit here that needs clean up. Um, it's not too bad. I would probably smooth this big spot out a little bit. 
So. And then we can get right to doing our sides. And I'm not gonna dip my brush in the flux at all. I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. Make sure everybody smooths out really nice. Not seeing too bad of spots. And remember, like I said, we're going to put the black patina on. Sometimes when I get my reflection going here, I get a little cross-eyed from looking at the the shiny solder. I'm not sure if anybody else gets cross-eyed. But I sure do. I don't think I really need to add more solder here. I just need to smooth it off a little bit. That's better. I hate when I get those little ripples. Usually the way I fix that is just like that. I pull it off to the side instead of lifting up. I know a lot of people like to go straight up and down and I find, to me, that jiggles the solder and then I get even more ripples. So if I can get my bead the way I want it and then just pull it off to the side. Now I'm just fiddling with stuff. This is where you get into that Zen time and you don't know when to stop. So the next part of this is going to be to do my edges. I am gonna let it cool off just a teeny tiny bit. So I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee and I will be right back while this is cooling. Okay, we'll start doing our um, edges you want a nice rolled edge and actually I'm going to fill in here a little bit and then I will show you how to make the hooks that will go right here in his head up these seams and sometimes I will use this little gizmo and I'll try and find a link for it um, but it makes life easier when you're doing this because it'll hold it straight for you. Sometimes it's kind of more of a pain than it is help, but it depends. So I'm going to flux my edges. A lot of the flux has probably um, gone over the edges from the beginning, but since it sat for a while... And I'm notorious notorious for missing a spot <laughs> so at the end I will have to turn him every which way and make sure I didn't miss a spot because I'll find it when I'm washing so I like to just get a little bit on the edge I go ahead and tin where I'm gonna go so it sticks better and then work on getting the nice round. I'm not sure if you can see that good on the camera, but it rolls around really nice there. This adds a good amount of strength to your piece, and I would definitely not just tin it. I would definitely try to do the um, the rounded beading because it's stronger. 
and you have to keep going back and forth with the angle that you're holding it because you don't want gravity to take over. You want to be straight up and down. Sometimes I will use gravity in my favor and it helps me fill in a hole. But in most cases, you need it to be straight up and down. And this guy is just a teeny bit tall right here. Whoops. At certain angles, he's a little bit taller. So it's tricky for me to um, to get the angle of my iron right. I don't know why sometimes you're going along just fine. And then it doesn't want to pick anything up. Usually if you just give it a good wipe, it will start acting normal again. I will try and get in that little hole. There we go. And more than likely, I will speed this part up because for you, I'm sure it's kind of like watching paint dry. You get the gist of it. And I don't think I put any flux on this side. I think I flux the other side. That's me using my gravity. Now I should turn this around so that I'm not doing this over my hand. Because if it falls off and you've got a rubber glove on, you're going to have a really nice burn. Ask me how I know that. I've had it happen one time. I've never let it happen again. Some of these angles are always tricky to get to. But if you fiddle with them long enough, they'll get smooth for you. And look nice. And I do encourage that you um, check out as many different people as you can find on YouTube or in person when you're developing your technique. Some people will... Um, will say something different. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying it's different. And you have to decide for yourself 
which method you think is is right for you. Um, I've seen a number of, of videos and two in person where I've gotten differing opinions on how to do these parts. And I'll be honest, I'll try anything once, but if I don't feel like it's working for me, I'll go back to the way I was doing it, or maybe I'll combine the, the methods. It depends on, you know, what works for you. And, I mean, I've seen some people that they have the most beautiful solder skills. Um, I don't think mine are too bad, but, I mean, there's definitely room for improvement. There always is. But, I mean, I've seen some that it's like, wow, that's beautiful. Now, see, I got this little clump from where it went over before. I'm going to try and melt that down. I'll use some of it, and that can just fall off. We'll get it back. I'm going to lay it down here and try and fix this spot right here. That looks a little bit bumpy to me. That's better. Or I'm cross-eyed, one of the two. We'll find out when I watch the video. Oh, yeah, I'm cross-eyed. Look at that little... Let's smooth out these little ridges. The patina is going to cover some of that, but maybe I'm just being too finicky. I don't know. I've actually seen some... Well, I don't think that they bother with where they have ripples or not, which that feels a little bit low to me, which I think that's just a development of your own style and what you like, because honestly, it doesn't look bad. Their pieces are not, um, they don't look unprofessional or anything. I just, I just think it's your own personal taste. 
if I have a long bead like this, I don't like to see, I don't like to see a bunch of lines in between. And that's, that's just my preference. I mean, because honestly, sometimes you can actually overdo it. <laughs> And then you mess up everything, so. Alright, let's let him cool for a minute. I have pre-tinned some wire. I don't buy the tinned wire, and the reason for that is I have a ton of electrical wire in all kinds of sizes. And this actually might be, it'll probably be okay, but it's a little thinner than I wanted to use for this guy. Kind of wanted to use this thickness. See the difference? Um, but I, I've got a bunch from when some renovations happened at my parents' house and the electricians gave me all the wire. So I just tinned my own. Hang on just a second. I'm going to get another piece of that. Yeah, so this one is 18 gauge. I think the other one there is 20 gauge, and that's just, to me, for this size guy, that's a little bit flimsy. So, now you get to see how to tin it, which I think everybody knows how to do this, but I just flux my copper wire really well, and then it does get very hot, so my rusty, rusty pliers are going to hold it. And it doesn't take much, but you just have to heat it up and tin it. And the copper gets very hot, like I said, and it will help spread it because it's so hot. I'm going to pick up some of these little balls off my pad here. She certainly don't need um, a big glob of solder to do this. I just like to make sure I get the majority of it covered. So when I do patina it, it's all patina in the same color. And of course this little wire is going to be a tiny bit hot. So I'm going to have to wait just a second before I show you how to make the loops. And I do a loop and a tail. Well, this end's not that hot. We can do it with this end in my cutters. So I have all my rusty stuff from the flux <laughs> here and I'll just make myself a loop. It's not a perfect jeweler's loop, it's just a loop. And I bend it back a little bit. And I like to leave myself a really nice tail to go into the seam so I will cut it long. I mean, if I was doing jewelry, I would be a little bit more meticulous with my hook. But this works fine for these guys. And... Flip him onto the back side. I'll wipe this off a little. And then, let's see, here we are. I have this nifty third hand that I like to use. Um, when I'm putting it in. So, just keep you in camera. I normally 
put it off to the side, but to keep it in camera, I will put it here and get this right about where I want it. And I hold it back here because this doesn't get hot. Myself a nice little glob of solder. And once I get him down, I just make a new bead over the top. And I try to blend it in the best that I can with the rest of the, the bead that's there. And I like not closing the hook all the way here because then when I apply the chain, whoops, wrong end, ding dong. When I apply the chain, um, I can just open it up and put it in with no issues. Sometimes I don't use chains. Sometimes I use um, leather or like jewelry cord. So I'm going to try and get down here a little bit. Make this bead as thick as the uh, off a little bit I will take him over and wash it and I I have been testing out various washes to get my patina to look good um, I've used baking soda and water which I think that's what the RV people use at Conway glass um, I've added a little Dawn dish soap to it that works pretty darn good for me um, I've also tried like CJ's flux remover, which does a good job. Um, and then I have tried, there's one that you just spray on and wipe off. You don't need water. I will look for the name of that. I don't see the bottle sitting over there. Um, but it's a good one too. And I definitely like that one for my bigger pieces. That way I don't have to like take it in the shower. You know? <laughs> but um, we, uh, I'll probably just use my CJ's flux remover today or the Dawn. Depends on what happens when I get to the sink. So I'll see you shortly. Okay. I actually ended up using the baking soda and, uh, Dawn. I'm going to use the Novacan uh, Black Patina. And I think I've seen so many different methods of doing this, but I think one of the main things that you need to do is you need to make sure that you got all your flux off. Um, so I normally wash mine twice to be sure. And I'm just actually, I have a a flux brush that I cut down and I just use that to apply my black patina and I don't know I mean I don't know that I've ever gotten mine to be like jet black I mean I've gotten it dark and this is getting pretty dark but um, I've seen some where on camera it looks like it is ebony black and I've never had that luck and I'm not sure it could be because of my water here um, I have a well I'm out in the country 
and I know that I have a lot of iron in my water. So maybe that is changing my properties. I mean, this, to me, it still looks good. It's still not a nice black color. Um, I do want to try, uh, somebody had mentioned, like at Walmart or wherever you can buy gun cleaning stuff, that you can get the... Um, the bluing agent for guns and that sounds like it would be pretty even if it didn't come out black if it came out like that gunmetal gray that'd be kind of cool and I know in the jewelry world there are some patinas for copper and brass and um, boy they have all kinds of colors I've been tempted to try one of those just to see if I can get different colors. Um, I have a lady who wants something done with gold and I've seen where you can gold leaf your solder, which honestly I think that would get pretty darn expensive um, you could probably get the the fake gold leaf it doesn't have to be real gold I suppose but then I would be a little bit leery you know of of cleaning it down the road um, so there's one side let's do this side Hopefully, I still have enough here. Um, because, you know, you tell people not to use an ammonia-based cleaner on their stained glass. You know, get a, a glass cleaner that doesn't have ammonia. Or use vinegar water. But I would think with, um, with putting, like, the gold leaf on... I would be afraid that would come off or it would start to flake off and if you're going to spend that much for gold, you don't want it flaking off. I may actually have to put a little bit more in my cap. This stuff is kind of um, peculiar because once it starts working, it's not going to really go and do much more. I did want to try putting in a spray bottle. I've seen people that just spray it on. And that looks pretty neat. I'd be afraid that I might get it everywhere, but <laughs> this is bad enough. I mean, just the brush spit back. I've ruined many of t-shirts because I forgot to put my apron on, which if you notice, I don't know if you can see my shirt. I forgot to put my apron on again. But this is an old t-shirt, so I'm not worried about this one. But I do get little speckles. And I do find putting on, like flooding it, I get better color than trying to sparingly go around and spread it. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. If it's just flooding it makes it easier, I'm not sure. I'm not a chemist. Now I will pick it up and make sure I got my edges good. And then there's the camp of to rinse or not to rinse. I always rinse mine. I don't necessarily wash it again. Um, it depends on what it does to my glass. Because on some glass, like the iridescence, sometimes patina 
will stick to that iridescent. And you either have to wash it to get it off or I saw, I think it's Samantha Ashley. She does some beautiful work. You should look for her YouTube channel. Um, I think she, I thought that was a crack for a minute, but it was a hair off the brush. Uh, she actually found that if you go back over the stained part of the glass that has patina stain on it with the patina, it will actually lift it off of the iridescent, which is kind of cool. I'd have never thought to do that, but I'm glad she shared that tip. So now I'm going to go rinse him off and clean my brush out, clean my hands up. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. My little scrappy bear. Try and come up with some abstract scrappy things for you to do with your expensive glass that we don't like to waste. Okay, back again. He's been rinsed off. I've been using the Clarity for right now. I do want to try the car polish one, the Carnuba Mother's Car Wax or whatever. Whatever the one is that doesn't have polish in it because everybody says you don't want an abrasive like the polish has. So I use the Clarity for now because I bought it and it's taken, this bottle's lasted a really long time. Um... And I will put this on here and just let it dry and then buff it off. Put them on the back too. And then I will attach my chain and he will be good to go. We will take him. I have a, a booth in a store in blowing rock so we will take him up to blowing rock on probably Monday or Tuesday all right I'm gonna let that sit and dry I like to get that nice frosty look to it and honestly with as chilly as the studio is I don't know how quickly that's gonna happen today um, but we'll see. I, uh, we'll come back, polish them up, put the chain on. We'll be good. Okay, well, here he is, all finished up. I did use some Pepio paint and paint a nose on. You can do that beforehand so that you can bake it in the oven, but after 24 hours, it is permanent. And I have tested it with um, trying to wash it off with vinegar, alcohol, spray, uh, Windex, glass cleaner. After 24 hours, it's not come off for me on anything. So, um, just to get that little detail in there, we, we did use the Pebio paint. And I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe. And... Share my videos if you like them, and I will see you in the next one.